We continue to preview the 2022 college football season. Our stop today is Portales, New Mexico, where we get to visit with Ty Hyatt, who is in his second season with the Eastern New Mexico Greyhounds. Coach, first off, it's good to get to, to see you again. And I know we are right smack dab in the middle of the summer. So uh, you have spring in the past. I want to talk about that in just a moment. The, the new season is just right around the corner. But in your first year there in Portales, four and seven record, and you know you're you're making some adjustments as you go along. So give us a brief overview of last year and take us into where we are now. Yeah, no, thanks, Joey, for having me on. Um, Portales has been uh, everything I thought it would be. You know, one of the things as we talked last year is you know I grew up in a town of 1,200 people um, in a real small ranching community. So coming to Portales and having 20,000 people in a town, I feel like I get lost sometimes in the big city. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, but it's been really good. You know, when when our coaching staff got hired last, you know, at the very end of last April, uh, you know, we were coming off of obviously the COVID and those type things. And um, with our program, you know, we hadn't had spring practice or anything. And uh, there was a lot of movement. There were a lot of changes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think back to last fall and it's definitely going to be like every coach has a book that they're going to write their entire career. I think my first season here at Eastern as head coach, there's probably going to be multiple chapters <laughs> um, of just everything that happened, you know, because it was uh, I was extremely proud of our kids. One of the things that really drew me to Eastern was that we have a lot of kids that just give their best effort every day. Kids that play hard, um, kids that are that are very blue collar, uh, show up every single day. And that's what we had this fall, um, this past fall. And, you know, you go into game one against Central Washington, um, Quick little story, like not many people know this. We go into that home opener against Central Washington, who is a great program. Uh, they ended up making the playoffs last year. Well, we had 25 kids um, that were out due to COVID testing three hours before the game. Um, and uh, and it was and, and we were a young team anyway. So all of a sudden you go into that game and you lose that many kids hours before the game and everything. And, and, and our kids just face so much adversity. Um, but one of the things that our staff was looking for with us being so young last year was was showing up every single day with a great attitude, showing up on time and just giving their best effort. And, and I think we did that for the most part every single game last year. There were a couple games where it got away from us late in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, there's one game in particular with Angelo, who obviously they made it to the national quarterfinals. Really good team. Like they just they just took us to the woodshed and really and beat us down and. Um, but I really think besides, you know, everything else, like I think our team did everything that, that we were supposed to do in the fall. And, and then the goal with this winter and spring were, you know, we kind of talked about spring is, you know, this last spring ball we had, it was the first spring ball on campus since 2019. Um, and for those that are just very familiar with college football, like that's really where you mold your team. You mold your team. Like we talk about th four phases within our program. We talk about the first phase being winter conditioning um, and, and really that grind. And we talk about the second phase of spring ball. And then the third phase, which we're in right now with summer conditioning leads us to the fourth phase of the season. And when you're at a program where you miss those phases continuously for multiple years, it, it tends to have an effect on the program. Um, but I can tell you that, that our kids – I was so happy with the fact that right after we played our last game at Commerce, um, you know, who I thought was an extremely talented team. They're obviously FCS now. Um, I thought we battled them and then our kids came back and they were hungry to get better. And, and I can really, when I tell our kids, they say, you know, when you go to sleep every single day, you want to look at yourself in the mirror and just know that you did everything you could to become better that day, go to sleep and wake up and do it again. And, and I really feel that our team did that through winter conditioning um, they did that through spring ball as that kind of leads into our summer running right now. And again, I'm, I'm happy for you all that you were able to have spring ball this year and that, that moves us into where we are right now. But it, with that in mind, there are some changes and, and folks who saw the program last year are going to see some different people, personnel, both on the field and on the sidelines as well. And I think it starts when you're talking about your players, new quarterback there, Valencia moves on. But you have a transfer in Case and Martin coming in, and also I'm sure there'll be competition in the camp. There really will. Uh, we have some young quarterbacks that that we really like in our program. Um, but I will say with Case and, uh, and that's one of the things we talk about is that we're gonna you know you're gonna earn everything that you get. But for our program to be able to get a young man like Case, uh, you know, Case was a, a very heralded high school quarterback out of Manville, Texas. 
Manville High School and was at North Texas, actually played in a lot of games at North Texas. Um, and you just talk, Joe, you talk about the God shining down on you. You know, it. Uh, not many people know about this, but like his his father uh, grew up outside of Lubbock. Um, his mother is is a New Mexico girl. His grandparents, he has a set of grandparents that live in Rio Doso. Um, phenomenal place, by the way, if you haven't been. And uh, his set of grandparents that live in Rio Doso, and then his other set of grandparents live in Lubbock. Um, so for us to be able to to be able to get Case in here um, as a graduate transfer that has two years to really help us um, specifically offensively as we transition, because the offense here for many years had been v- phenomenal at the triple option mm-hmm. uh, and the flex bone. And, and now we're doing some more pro style spread concepts and still running the football. But you need to have a quarterback that can do those things. And, and offensively, we're really excited about Case and joining our team. He's been here all summer with our strength coaches and really leading the way with our team. And and we're, I tell you, we're pretty excited heading into fall camp. Coach, I've been on the broadcast on a few calls with Greyhounds uh, football before. And I have to tell you, I still think of that when I see those gray, green and gray uniforms. I still think triple option. So I'm going to have to adjust my thinking <laughs> then as, as we go along. Well, it gives me an opportunity to talk about a couple of running backs then. I mean, yeah. you have Howard Russell coming back, an all-conference performer last year, Isaiah Tate as well. And and whether it's Martin or whoever that gets to, to throw the ball for you, it'll be a little bit different look. Uh, with the, from the receiver spot, you lose the Lone Star Conference receiver of the year in Justin Manyweather. So it will be still a different look all the way around. It will. And that's, uh, and that's one of the things, too, with us. Like, uh, you know, running the football is always going to be a staple at Eastern. Um, it's, it's been one of the things that's been a calling card. Like if you go back to more pro-style days, maybe in the late 80s, 90s, and leading up till now, like there's always been a staple of being able to, to run the football and stop the run. Um, and like the names that you mentioned, Isaiah Tate and then Howard Russell, um, both are f- extremely phenomenal, talented players. And especially Howard, you know, Howard, Howard finished fourth in the conference in rushing and he really only played half the season. <laughs> so it's yes. one of those things you look back to the coach and it's like, wow, we probably should have given him the ball. Look a bit <laughs> um, you know, but Howard just came on so strong. I mean, he ran for 100 yards versus like multiple teams. I mean, he just did a great job and, and uh you know, in our offensive line, like I've been really happy with how they've progressed. Um, there's still some youth, but I just, you know, it really helps having guys back there that have experience. Um, and but like you said, like replacing Justin, um, one of the things I think I think we've recruited really well. I think we've recruited some kids that fit what we do offensively on the perimeter. Um, I think one of the things that people are going to see is that we're going to be uh, like one of the things that we talk about a lot in our receiver room is just strength and numbers. Um, you know, last year we had Justin and he was the receiver of the year and everything. And it was great, but there were times where maybe it was a one man show. Um, and now we feel like we have the ability to be able to maybe spread the ball a little bit more, which is ideally what you want to do offensively when we talk about like balance, because we don't really talk so much, maybe run pass, but we want to balance to make sure that we're getting the ball to our playmakers. Um, so we're, we're looking forward because that's, I think that's going to be a very healthy competition as we go into camp in August. We're speaking now with Coach Ty Hyatt here on the Summit as we preview the college football season for 2022 here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please like this video. Take the time to do that. It helps us. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do that as well. We've crossed the 1,000 subscriber mark. So now we're pushing for two. And I encourage you to be along for the ride. Coach, I want to go to the defensive side of the ball now. Mason Richards, the defensive lineman of the year in the Lone Star Conference last year. He's not there anymore. So, again, some more shoes to fill for you. Take us through the defense. Yeah, well, and and I'll tell you, Joey, it's a very interesting time right now in college football um, because, you know, like Mason, like you said, he was the defensive lineman of the year, uh, entered the transfer portal and then ended up getting signed by North Texas. Um, I really think, and probably as you've gone through all of these with the Lone Star coaches, there were multiple teams in the conference that their best player entered the portal and then went to Division I. Um, And I think that's just something that we're seeing now in college football where you're going to have some more movement in those things. Um, but I can tell you, like defensively, you know, we returned eight out of 11 starters on defense. Uh, I think it was a huge addition for our program to be able to hire Jamie Bish. Uh, Jamie uh, was the defensive coordinator at Bemidji State the last four years. And, and Bemidji, they actually made the NCAA tournament this last year, first time mm-hmm. in school history, won a game for the first time in school history in the NCAA tournament. Uh, so for him to be with with our defense, which has a little bit more experience right now overall on our team, 
it gets me really excited. And, and our defensive line, I think, uh, you know, the thing that I love here at Eastern is that some of our kids have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, um, you know, because sometimes it's where, you know, you, you, you know, it's, it's part of the New Mexico schools that are part of the Texas conference and, and, and they play with that edge. And I think with Mason leaving, I think that really challenged our defensive line because a lot of people think that they're not going to be as talented. And I, and I think that we have some really good players with, Aseli Finau and Rafi Satoa and Kevin McCracken and Kendrick Milford. Like we, we, I, we really feel that we have an eight deep of those kids that can play on the defensive line um, and some names um, like with Justin Brewer, uh, Christian Carruthers, like kids that are all of a sudden going to show up and, and people are going to like, wow, who are those players? Um, and that's a great thing on defensively because if, uh, and we feel that we're solid defensive line because if you're good on the defensive line, you have a chance to be really good defensively um and especially in the middle like we have Bo Burns coming back at linebacker um mm. Bo we felt that you know he should have been an all-conference player because he was third in the Lone Star in tackles um so he's got a chip on his shoulder we got Cameron Santa Cruz who's an all-conference player coming back um so we're we're pretty excited defensively just because with with losing Mason we still kept in contact with the majority of our roster on defense and, and I think that those guys, I, I'll tell you, being an offensive coach, going against those guys in spring ball every day was tough. You know, and I've always told our coaches, the whole staff, I'm like, you know what? Like if the spring is going to be that tough, like when we're thinking on offense, like, man, our defense can play. I get pretty excited about having the opportunity for us to be uh, to be better than what we were last year. That's a good that is a good feeling. That's something to go into the summer, I'm sure. Do you have enough chips, by the way, to go around for everyone's shoulders? I, it seems hey, like you know what? it's something <laughs> and you know what, Joey? It's funny because kids give me a hard time about that. And I just tell them though, I said that's that's part of who we are in Portales. That's part yeah. of Eastern New Mexico. That's part of uh, what we need to carry with us because again, we play in such a great conference. Like there's so many good teams in this conference. And so every single day we've got to wake up with that edge. Uh, that you know what we've got to be able to do our best and be able to prove the conference wrong because that's I think that's something that Eastern's been known for. I understand. I understand. Well, I, listen, I appreciate you going back and forth with me on that. You, you, by the way, are, are going to be there for a little while. Signed a multi-year contract and extended your contract through. And not only that, you talked about Coach Bish, but there are new coaches on your staff as well. So it's not just the players in in uniform, but the ones on the sideline calling the shots as well. Yeah, no, we added uh, Jamal Lewis as our offensive line coach. Uh, very fortunate to get him because our previous offensive line coach did a phenomenal job, but he got poached by the CFL. Um, and so, uh, you know, which it's kind of trending football. Um, but no, Jamal does a great job. And Coach Andre McCall, he's coming to us from Wayne State. And, uh, and I really think, too, with the contract extension, I really think that goes to our administration. Um, I think that really goes to the leadership of, of our athletic director, Paul Weir, uh, coach Weir is a coach himself. You know, he's coached Division One basketball at a high level. Um, and so for him to have the confidence uh, in our staff to be able to be here and be able to, to execute and be able to, uh, you know, like I go back to last year with four and seven, like here at Eastern, that's not acceptable. Um, and our goal is to be better and, and to keep on improving. And, and really, I think it just goes to them for the confidence they, they have in our young men. Um, for what their ability to be able to do well academically to graduate and then be able to play well in the conference. And coach, I appreciate the humility, but congratulations to you as well too, because it, it does say a lot for you and, and for your staff. As we wrap up our time, I, I want to ask about the schedule then. It is a solid schedule. 2022 bookended by in-state opponents. You go on the road first to take on New Mexico Highlands, close out the season at home against Western New Mexico. A nine-game conference schedule as well. First time that Greyhounds fans will get a chance to see you this year will be on a Saturday, September 10th, and that's going to be against Midwestern State as uh, you all are hosting that one. Yeah, no, we, we're pretty excited about our schedule. I, like you said, Joey, I think that this schedule is really tough. Uh, and I think it goes to this conference. Like this conference is really good at every every sport, but really football. I mean, there's some good teams, and and we're excited to play Highlands because it's in state. Um, you know, we want to play the in state schools, and and but our kids are you know we're pretty excited for Midwestern uh, because you know we host them on a Saturday night, and that was a game last year that you know when we look at our season and we circle that. Uh, hats off to them. Coach Bill Maskell does a phenomenal job. Great program. They're the, they're the defending champions. 
but that was a game that we lost in overtime. And I think our kids, you know, when they look at that season, they say, you know what, like that's one where we didn't finish and that's on us. Uh, but our kids are looking forward to that. And, and our kids are looking forward to renewing. Uh, you know, we still have quite a few kids on the team that played against Tarleton. That's who we play week three. Uh, so, you know, we're excited to go over there and, and, and that game will be on ESPN and those things. And so I think that that'll be great for our kids. I'm sure that they're going to have a great crowd because they just, you know, added more to their stadium and everything else and those type things. Um, but like you said, you know, the, the other big one for us is the wagon wheel game. So, yeah. so that was November 5th. So I didn't mean to leave that off of my list of all of them. I, I did, just didn't want to list your whole schedule because I, you know, right. I looked at it a couple of times and thought, wow, there are a lot of games with meaning uh, yes. for the for the program, and it, and it should be a fun season. Coach Ty Hyatt, the head football coach in his second season for the Eastern New Mexico Greyhounds. Coach, first, and I guess not just first, last, thank you for taking time with me today. I appreciate it. Enjoy talking college football with you, and it's always a privilege to get to visit with you all, and we will follow the Greyhounds this year. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joey.